Hi, and welcome to the Vlogger Interviews. Today we've got someone special. A Tree 3 Margaret has been a lifelong artist, and vlogging is only her latest canvas. I think you'll appreciate, if, especially if you're a creative person, what her perspective is about this world we call vlogging. One of the reasons I started to do this was to try to help demystify what vlogging is. And you brought up a very good point. If we could talk a little bit about, um, even though you say there really isn't any definition for vlogging, how do you describe vlogging for the uninitiated? Well, to begin with, <clears throat> I wouldn't be interested in demystifying it. I'm all for mystifying it. Um, I like it that we don't have it nailed down. Uh -huh. If we don't have it all nailed down, there are many more possibilities. So... Um, I can't really go along with that idea of trying to clarify. Um, I think that that's um, something that has happened because most people want clarification. Right. And it has um, it resulted in what I consider narrowing the possibilities. Mm -hmm. But I mean, what... I mean, what I'm trying to do is at least uh, most people that I know, and I work a lot in traditional media, which you do as well, um, but, you know, a lot of people just have no conception of this sort of thing existing or what it is. And we, granted, we can't quantify it because it is so diverse, but how do we make it accessible to some to, to people who have never seen it before? Well, they're not ready. I think they're just, they're not here yet. Mm -hmm. um, I have many, many friends and acquaintances, and <laughs> I have to explain what vlogging is. Not only don't they know, but they're not really interested. Mm -hmm. You can't sell it to somebody. Uh, people either want, well, we could say almost they want to be bigger than they are, because mm -hmm. it's making us bigger. I mean, look, I have people in Albania watching my bread-making videos, so um, I'm bigger. Not everybody is, is ready to be bigger, and plus there are lots of people that are afraid, and there's all these things to be cautioned about. What about the weirdos and the people stealing your identity and all of that? I don't really see much point in trying to get more people to do it. Right. But, I mean, what, what attracted you to, to this world in the first place? And how did you discover it? Because I started performing when I was two. Mm -hmm. I've performed my whole life, one thing or another. <laughs> and <clears throat> um, I, I like to do that. I... I I like to, um, first of all, I consider myself um, a videographer. So it's not, I'm not interested in just talking about something. I like to make videos. I like to make them artful. And I, I consider it for the last 10 years that um, uh, videography has been my art form. So I take it very seriously. Uh, some places... They're not really interested in that. They just want to hear you talking, you know. So I can do that, too, <laughs> as you've seen. I don't always art them up. But I, I like to do all kinds of different things. And I think it's because that was just in my temperament. This was made for me. Vlogging, I'm, I'm, I'm a natural vlogger. I took to it like a duck out of water, into water. <laughs> and... <laughs> The stuck's out of water. The way they waddle is not <laughs> good. Anyway, um, I think that I was just kind of waiting for this medium to come along. It gave me a great opportunity to uh, do a lot of things I wanted to do, like my autobiography. Mm -hmm. So I coined the word autobiovideography. Mm -hmm. I, could, I could put my autobiography all onto video and... In fact, I have a site called Autobiovideography where I'm hoping people can post their their autobiovideographies. I think it's going to put writing your your autobiography 
totally uh, in the dust. That's just going to be a thing of the past because it's much more fun uh, and you leave much more if you uh, are talking about your life rather than writing about your life. And so then you can include all kinds of things. And uh, I also have this project, the Loose Ends Project, getting rid of things. Once you put them onto video, you can dump them because you have them permanently. So, like, I had my, my first birthday dress. I had that dress. Wow. And I had the pictures of my first birthday party. Why am I lugging this stuff around? Because it's important. But I made a video about my, uh, my first birthday party. Then I could get rid of all those things because I had the video. The auto bio video what is it that's uh, it i had to practice too it's tricky <laughs> so it's sort of like a personalized it's an it's an oral history but a personalized way of doing it correct it's a, it's it's trying to uh do it uh as an artist mm -hmm. so i mean is it is it something uh that you you simply talk to the camera or is it you're putting together sort of a mini Documentary. I haven't seen it yet, so it can be uh, one of my playlists on my channel, A Tree Three. Um, one of my playlists is the autobiography. So I have, um, you know, maybe thirty or forty pieces in there. Some are acted out. Mm -hmm. Some are some are little mini dramas. Some are, they're all they all have something extra to them rather than just talking. To me, that's the fun of it as well. Right. What can you make out of this? So it's not just the documentation. So it's the interpretation of, of basically your life and your life adventures. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I mean, it's it seems to... And, and I, yeah, I say demystify, but I suppose, you know, in finding how... Incredible, and, and you've said it so well in terms of what I think you said something about we're all sort of out in cyberspace and sort of bumping into each other. You said in this other video that I mean, that's sort of what I found and wanting to share it with a lot of people who haven't discovered it yet. So maybe demystifying isn't the right word, maybe I should rethink that in describing what this is. Or, yes, or, and it, this, this autobio videography that's just one thing, right. That's right. just one one little department. Um, I don't know. Find, I've been kind of disappointed because uh, I feel that um, some of the sites get too site conscious. Right. They're more they're more involved with their site than they are with the the act of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, they want to feel safe and secure. They want everything to go well. They don't want any YouTube haters, whatever. <laughs> and uh, by the time they build this whole uh, site of how they want it to be, you know what? I recently try went to a site to get in, and I was denied. <laughs> 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 I thought that was quite private, an accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> it's because they are so concerned with having everything run smoothly. They, I, the only thing I can think of is that uh, somebody on the board uh, thought I might be a disruptive um, influence. So I mean, so really, the art of vlogging at the moment is a little too site specific and not sort of free form as. As it should be, is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. Where do you think this sort of uh, form of expression can evolve? Is that a fair question? Well, I think yes. The question. Mm. I like the question. <laughs> well, I would be nervous with an answer. <laughs> yeah. I think the important thing is to know the question that that this question. Yes, that's the fascinating thing. Where is this going? Where could it go? Thank you, Margaret. Now, if you'd like to hear more about what Margaret has to say about vlogging, I got something unusual today. There's another part to this interview. You can click here or you can click in the uh, description below and see the second part of this interview. But whatever you do, make sure you check out her channel, A Tree 3, on YouTube. Thanks for joining me. I will see you next time on the Vlogger Interviews. <laughs>